Attracting and retaining top employees in the commercial snow and landscape industry is very difficult. Check out this conversation with Eddie Zakes from Earth Development, who won the Snow and Ice Management Association's Best Place to Work Award two years in a row to find out what is culture, what does it mean to him, and how does he management? What are Earth Development's three core values? And what's the number one thing Eddie asks each employee before hiring them? Hey, it's Jack Jostis, and welcome to the Landscaper's Guide podcast, where we share sales, marketing, and leadership inspiration to help you grow your snow and landscape company. I met today's guest at the Sima Symposium the other year, and I'm really excited to share this conversation, and I hope to meet you at one of our upcoming events. We've got one coming up on recruiting, which is today's topic, and employee retention. So check out our show notes, landscapersguide.com slash events to see our in-person and virtual event schedule. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Landscaper's Guide podcast. Today I'm excited to have Eddie Zakes, the CEO of Earth Development, which is a commercial snow and landscape management company with clients all over the northern Midwest and they're expanding even beyond that. And Eddie, um, Earth Development has won the Sima best place to work award two years in a row in 2022 and 2023 what would you say is the key to the culture at at earth development why do you why do you believe you've won that award twice sure i i think well first jack thanks for having me i'm really really uh happy to be here earth development i think has worked really hard to try to be different uh and to uh, actually plant a flag and say, we're not trying to be the company that everybody would want to work at. We're trying to be us. We're trying to be our unique uh, identity within the snow and ice and, and landscaping maintenance space. Um, and we've really planted a flag around our culture and our investment in our people. I think that is what is attracting people to work at Earth Development and also what makes us a great place to work at within this industry. And, and when you say investment and culture and people, culture is kind of this nebulous thing. What is it, what does it mean to you and how do you yeah. invest in it as a, as a leader? Yeah, absolutely. So I am maybe a little bit different than many landscaping executives. I didn't grow up in this industry. I'm not the third generation of this. I didn't start when I was 16 years old and move up through operations. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, my path into this is really very different than most. I, um, have an entrepreneurial background, have done a variety of different things. And in 2021, I bought Earth Development from the founder. So Earth Development was started in 1999. This year, we're celebrating our 25th anniversary. In those 25 years, uh, it went from being, you know, the one man with a truck and a trailer making it happen to being uh, today we operate in the last year, we had operations in 14 states. Uh, we we rely on a broad base of, of service partners to help us to achieve um, that service. But when I got here in 2021, the team is looking at me as like, who are you and where did you come from? Uh, the company had a culture um, and like you said, culture can be this mushy, nebulous thing. Uh, it can be a couple of phrases on a wall. Um, but a lot of times you could take those culture statements, that mission statement, that vision statement, crumple them up, throw them in a big popcorn bowl, shake it up, and we can be at a meeting of a bunch of CEOs. Uh, and any one of us could go into that bowl and pull out one, and it could sound good for our company. And Earth Development had a little bit of that. And then we worked hard to create what we consider to be our unique identity today. Uh, and we, when I talk about investing in that, um, that has that was a process of uh, a lot of discussion and a lot of, I don't, I don't want to say soul searching, but a lot of like, who do we want to be when we grow up uh, to arrive at a, at a handful of statements that really uh, create that decision-making framework that we use on a day-to-day -day basis to make earth development better. So what, you know, so you bought the company, what, when you bought the company, what aspects of the culture did you know that you wanted to keep? And then which ones were things that you knew you needed to change? So I bought the company not because I thought it was broken uh, and because, you know, it was I was going to come in as some sort of hero and save the company. I'm not a turnaround specialist. I was looking for uh, uh, an 
a place where I could come in and like do my best work. Um, and so, you know, the team that was already here, we had incredibly hardworking team members that had put their blood, sweat and tears into earth development success. Um, it was about figuring out how do we empower them? How do we resource them uh, in, in those ways? I think that we, um, we doubled down on our sort of commitment to excellence. Uh, we, we, we maybe um, worked to evaluate pay scales and incentives uh, and make some pretty significant changes in that space. Um, but I think like the, the core of, of the team that was here when I got here uh, is still with us today. And so, you know, it wasn't necessarily, you know, a lot of times when you hear about somebody buying a company, private equity, whatever, they come in and they, they make these wholesale changes and you don't even recognize the company anymore. For us, I think it's been, uh, it is, we are a very different company today, a few years later, post acquisition, we're a very different company, but it has been much more of a transition from that sort of uh, softer, uh, more of a binder in a bookshelf or a couple of statements on a wall to really being the heartbeat of, of the company today. And, and what are some of the things that are day to day? How do you operate? Like you would know this is, this is what I want and this is what I don't want. When I think about my employee culture, a lot of it's about the experience of working with people. It's really all about the experience of working with people. It's it's how we treat each other. It's how we treat our customers. It's also the quality of work that we do. And I can see when something is a fit in the culture and I can totally see when it's not. What's something that you would want to make yeah. sure happens on, on yeah. every 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 day? Yeah, we have we have three core values that we talk about uh, incredibly consistently. I think most of our team members uh, could recite them verbatim, no problem. Uh, those three uh, are persistently pursuing perfection, fair and generous, and a passion for our people. Uh, and culture isn't what we put on a wall or what we say it is. It's what we actually embody. It's what we actually do. So I, as a leader, can say our culture is X. Um, but if that's not what the people are doing and it's not how we actually behave in the company, that's not our culture. That's the culture that we aspire to. So pers persistently pursuing perfection is the first one. When you think about persistently pursuing perfection, the word that most people get hung up on is perfection. And this is the wrong point of emphasis. Persistently pursuing are the two keys that are in front of perfection. So persistence uh, implies that this is something that we're doing day in and day out, every day striving to be a little bit better. Pursuing, uh, we talk about a police pursuit. So uh, when police are pursuing the bad guy, they're only doing one thing, trying to get the bad guy. So police have a ton of different jobs, but when they are in a police pursuit, they have a singular focus. And that is, I'll drive right past the little lady who wants to get across the street. I'll drive right past X, Y, and Z. I will not stop for coffee and donuts. Uh, I am chasing the bad guy. Uh, and so at Earth Development, persistently pursuing perfection is that every day we are hungry to be better. We are striving to be better 1% at a time. And we believe that compounding effort leads to great results. Second one is fair and generous. And this is a compound phrase. So it's fair and generous. Uh, Generosity is our default posture at Earth Development. Um, I spent about 10 years of my career in philanthropic fundraising, very strange background for a landscaping executive, sure. Um, but what I learned there was uh, that generosity isn't just a, um, when we think about generosity, often it's, I, I give big gifts to my family at Christmas, or I'm really generous to a charity. Oh, Jack is really generous because of uh, him being uh, making big donations or, or giving gifts at Christmas or birthdays. In reality, generosity is a posture, and it's how we react to each other. Um, and so when I spot a need, I seek to address the need. Uh, when I want to be generous, I'd like to, uh, you say something that hurts my feelings, Jack. I have two different ways to interpret it. Uh, I can interpret it generously and say, ah, Jack's having a hard day, or he didn't mean it when he used this word. He was fumbling for the right way to express his emotions, uh, or what's the issue behind the way that he's talking to me, et cetera. So we're going to choose to think the best of people. We're going to choose to seek opportunities to serve them. We're going to try to compensate generously. When there's a dispute with one of our customers, we're going to favor the generous outcome that benefits our customer. We believe that this will reap long-term rewards uh, for us in the marketplace when we deal with service partners and there's some dispute about the services that they rendered. 
do we believe the best uh, of people and 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 actually seek to be generous toward them? Yes, that's the default posture. Now, what if I get taken advantage of? Well, that's not fair. And that's why it's fair and generous. And so while maybe my job is to look out for my team members and say, I want you, uh, I see that you're struggling. Can I help you? That's generous. But if I do that day after day after day and you're shirking your responsibilities or you're trying to cheat me if you're our service partner and you're saying that you did services that you didn't do, that's not fair. And so it's generosity backstopped by fairness. And then the third one for us would be the, uh, this passion for our people. And we actually draw three sets of circles uh, here. And the innermost circle for us uh, is is our direct employees. Um, you know, we have, we first and foremost are in an industry that has uh, a, a kind of strange type of differentiation. I don't mow the grass better than any of your other landscaping listeners. I don't have access to a secret technology that makes me better. I, it, we're not a pharmaceutical company that has a better drug. We're not a technology company that has a better line of code. What makes earth development better is our people. Uh, and so the people is we do business for people and through people and with people. Our customers are people. Uh, our service partners are people. Our team members are people. They have lives. They have families. They have hopes, dreams, and aspirations. Uh, and so we recognize that and say that we seek to honor and have a passion for that. That then feeds into persistently pursuing perfection and being fair and generous. If you come to our office, we have a beautiful office. Uh, we invest heavily in the attractiveness of our space. Very few of our clients come f come physically into our office. Why, why are we spending so much on it? Because we think that it leads to better outcomes uh, when our people know that we care about them. Why, why do we have a nice office? Because we care about, we work here. I want it to be nice for us. Um, and so that passion for our people shows up in um, compensation. It shows up in continuing education. It shows up in, um, uh, you know, Things like the best places to work where SIMA recognizes, Snow and Ice Management Association recognizes, you are offering all of these benefits that are best in class. Uh, you are offering professional development that is best in class. Uh, you're dealing with customers in a way that is best in class. Uh, and that's what really we start to do because then that reinforces persistently pursuing perfection. Uh, we're trying to be better every day. So, so you said there were three circles. One was... I'm drawing over here. So we've got yeah, direct, we've yeah. got direct employees and then our, our yeah. Our, so your... it, it's a, it's a series of concentric, it's a series of concentric circles, just uh -huh. like a bullseye, like a target. And so, so the center most one is our employees, uh, oh, is got the first it. ring. The second ring in this, in these circles, uh, is, uh, our service partners. And so, uh, for us, um, our service partners uh, are out in the field delivering work uh, on our behalf, and we treat them, uh, we have a passion for them. Uh, we need to do right by them. I think that there are other organizations that do uh, a fair amount of subcontracting um, that have really poor reputations in the space, and we want to be different. Um, we That's one of our stated goals is a lot of people don't want to work with a subcontracting organization, and if you do, we want to be the subcontracting organization of choice uh, that if you could choose to only work with one, you'd go, man, they're the one I really want to work with. And so what do we have to do to be different in that way? Uh, that comes down to actually what we have defined as our three uh, brand promises. And I'll get to those in a second. But the third circle then is our customer in those concentric circles. Um, and so, yeah, we have a passion for our customers uh, as well. Um, and it's making sure that, that um, again, the idea that they are people that have a problem to be solved, uh, that they're trying to avoid uh, or operational or reputational risk uh, related to the attractiveness of the, their facility, um, the safety of their facility, their ability to continue to do business as usual. Uh, we have a real passion for making sure that people in those businesses uh, are being served extraordinarily well. Well, I love that. You know, so persistently pursuing perfection, fair and generous, and then passion for our people. What one of the the core values that I was thinking of while you were talking about fair and generous at Ramblin' Jackson is create profit and results with integrity, right? So there's kind of this balance here. We have to be creating a profit because it fuels everything, all of our compensation, our ability to grow, the the stability of the company, um, and it also needs to be done with integrity, right? So there's this balance here of 
essentially what that means to me is when we sell something, we believe it's truly going to work. Because there are a lot of marketing companies out there who will sell you whatever because it's profitable, but it doesn't really work. That's not really integrity to me, if you know that. I mean, I think there's always some experimenting or we can't we can't necessarily guarantee a exact specific result, but we have done this before and we do know what works and there are ways of doing things that should work. And, and that's why we're persistently pursuing perfection. We are not perfect. I mean, you come right. to work here and there are days where I am not fair and generous. Uh, there are days here where I need the team to be generous to me because I don't handle something the way that I should. And the reason that we have these strong statements is we're saying this is how what we what we want to stand on. And so mm -hmm. uh, are there days where there's a gray area on some experiment in marketing? Marketing is hard. Uh, it, it, it's not, it's, it is art and science blended together. And so attribution of results and all the rest of these things can be really, really tricky. And so we are saying we want to differentiate ourselves on at Ramblin' Jackson on the basis of being ethical. Uh, and that is critical to our success. Uh, I, I can win and win unethically, and that is not the person I want to be. I I, I, I have one life, one reputation, uh, and I'm going to do everything that I can to protect it. It makes me think of um, the classic uh, management book, Good to Great, and Jim Collins uh, addresses the tyranny of the or and the genius of the and, and we need to reject the tyranny of the or and embrace the genius of the and that I can be both successful and ethical. It's not that I can be successful or ethical. Uh, and too often as business owners, we're presented with or or equations when we need to convert them to and equations. I I really agree with that in many ways. I was I was thinking about that. You mentioned that during a meeting we had. Was that yesterday or two days ago? The recently you, meant, you read recently. So you mentioned that book, and I was thinking though uh, that quote though about the or versus the and. And I remember when I was starting my podcast, I had I had a friend of mine actually who was like, oh well you can't do that because and he was basically like, well, I'm not going to do that because I'm a dad and um, my family is more important. And all of this, basically what he was saying is that be, you can't do social media and have a podcast and be a good parent. And I'm like, no, dude, this actually, I, I can do it all during, this is my job and it helps support my family. And it's not, it's not, or he had this whole idea that marketing his business and growing his business had to be at the expense of his family and his health. And to me, it's like, no, I'm going to do both today. I, I'm going to work out today. I'm going to have dinner with my family and I'm going to go to work. Yeah. And maybe, maybe piggybacking on a Jim Collins illustration of the idea of a flywheel that uh, by being healthy, by being strong mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, uh, it makes it turns that flywheel one revolution faster and becomes a reinforcing thing. So I mentioned brand promises. So we talk about three brand promises uh, that we we aspire to be reliable, responsive, and partnering. So we have these core values. That's that's great. We use them uh, both internally and externally to make decisions, uh, but all with the goal of being perceived in the marketplace and not just perceived, but actually backing it up with reality of being reliable, responsive, and partnering. So reliable is uh, when you think about your car, uh, is my car reliable? That means that my car starts every time that I walk out to it. If it doesn't start every once in a while, uh, even if it starts 50 times in a row, but then the, the 51st time it doesn't start, your car is not reliable. So uh, we want our team members to be reliable. We want our service partners to be reliable. And importantly, we want our customers to be reliable, uh, that we show up when we're supposed to show up, uh, that we do the job that we're supposed to do. And each of our people does that. Our service partners and our customers are reliable. Responsive is like, do we answer the phone? Are we, when there is a problem, are we responsive? How quickly can you resolve a problem? Not just a phone call, but if I have a problem between me and you, Jack, how quickly are you responding uh, to correct the problem, et cetera? It's not just emails and phone calls. Uh, and then partnering this long-term orientation um, that this is mutually beneficial. And it's a partnership that I have with each of our team members. It's a partnership that I have with each of our service partners, a, a partnership that I have with each of our customers, a partnership that I have with Ramblin' Jackson uh, that, that is, it's not, um, it's not short-term, 
it's, it has this long-term value creating uh, and mutual a partnership is mutually beneficial. Uh, I agree. And I think yeah. so then that becomes a flywheel uh, just like this, this individual who's maybe concerned that, uh, that I can't do all of these things. Absolutely. You can, you might not do all of them equally well. And that's where having strong partners like Ramblin Jackson has really helped mm -hmm. us. Well, I appreciate that. And, and um, I like that reliable, responsive partnering, those are things I was, um, I'm actually presenting at a digital agency conference coming up about recruiting and retention. Um, and I was thinking about why I like working here and I like working with people. Who, reliability is actually a big deal to me, like with clients and with the people I work with. So I think that's, it's part of, like I said, the experience of working with people is 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 the culture. So Eddie, Eddie, you're new, right? So you're the new CEO. You bought the company. These are wonderful ideas. I love the way they sound. How do you how do you prevent them from being Eddie's cool ideas on the podcast or in the binder? Talk to me a little bit, like maybe what's your meeting cadence like at the company, and do these get brought up at every meeting, or are they brought up once a year? T tell me a little bit, like sure. how do you how do you get it? And and also, I think it's a, I think if if you would be okay sharing, maybe like how many people work at um, Earth Development? Yeah. So you've got your three tiers, you've yeah. got your core employees, you've got your service partners. How many employees do you have? Because I think that's really yeah what, we're what, we're. We're around twenty. We're around twenty-five to thirty team members. Uh, you know, if, if mm -hmm. depending on how you depending on how you count for the season, et cetera, uh, that are here in our offices, mm -hmm. uh, interacting with our customers, et cetera. We have um, hundreds of service partners uh, that are then out in the field, and uh, of course, hundreds of of customers uh, that we're serving um, as well. How do we? How do we? reinforce these things. I was smiling as you asked that question because this afternoon um, at two o'clock central time, we have our monthly all hands meeting and the monthly all hands meeting. Uh, we, we um, often, you know, so we start always every time if there is a new team member who has joined, we introduce this person. Uh, we do employee recognition as the second step. And so uh, this is uh, anniversary recognitions and we have a, 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 uh, uh, a timeline essentially if you've worked here for one year two years three years there are different um, recognitions that are in here and obviously that's reinforcing our passion for our people we just had our vp of operations um celebrated his uh fifth year he's he's in his sixth year now but uh he just took a week-long trip or excuse me a weekend trip that earth development paid for with him and his wife and children uh, they went skiing as a family um, on Earth Development's dime because he had sell his five year anniversary recognition nice. was this. Um, today, Adam, uh, one of our field operations supervisor, is celebrating his one year anniversary. He's getting a uh, puffy vest that's like a members only. You only get it if you've worked here for a <laughs> year uh, that has an Earth Development logo and his designation uh -huh. with, of his professional uh, status on the uh, embroidered on it. Um, and at the end, and, and then from there, we, so we introduce new team members, then we're going to do uh, anniversary recognitions. The third thing that we do every time is wins from the previous month. And I, I don't have one to show you, but we have a little card that you fill out that says, uh, basically, uh, we are the earth development difference because we, the people, are the earth development difference. Um, and on the back of it, it says you were caught uh, demonstrating the difference or something to this effect. And it said, and then there's check boxes that are you were basically recognized for persistently pursuing perfection, being fair and generous, having a passion for our people, for being reliable, responsive, and partnering. And then here's what you did, and you're nominated for this. And we sit in for probably 15 minutes of a one-hour meeting, maybe even 20 minutes depending on the day. It's nonstop, and people are mad because, oh, you stole the one that I was going to give for Jack. Um, oh, man, I was going to say that. Let me piggyback on what you just said. And it's not about recognizing yourself. It's about recognizing other team members for the reinforcement. Yeah, of these I love things. it. And then I conclude every one of these meetings by talking about the uh, one of our values, uh, one of those things. And, and we, these all have breakdowns that are more than just these statements that I've said to further describe them. And so every month I'm going to pick one of these and focus on it. 
but then it's also hiring and firing. It's, it's incentivizing. It's building in a complete structure around this is who we want to be. When someone is in breach of one of these values, what do we do about it? That's when it really hits the, you know, the, the rubber hits the road uh, to say, is this real or is this just something that makes you look like a good corporate uh, citizen that you've done some exercise? It's not a thought exercise. It's a way of, uh, it's a way of living here. Oh, I love it. And I can just hear in your voice and the way you're so you're most excited about this part of what you told me today is that meeting and praising your people. So I believe that it's real, that the passion for your people is real. And uh, I love hearing that you're celebrating it with this, with this, uh, you know, the, these different milestones and recognition. It's so important for, for people to do that. And I'm not, I'm not surprised that you've won, you know, best place to work two years in a row. So um, we could talk for this quite a bit. We've got to wrap up. My last question for you is what is something that you always look for in a new hire? And then what's something maybe that is a no? Like if, if, you're, if you see it, it's a yes and you'd hire them. And if you saw something else, it would be a no, you're not hired. Well, people are complex. And so all of these things are on some sort of a spectrum, of course. Right. <laughs> uh, the very first thing that came to mind is a sort of entrepreneurial spirit. Uh, and at Earth Development, we're about people who get stuff done. Uh, and uh, entrepreneurs, uh, you know, people will talk about an entrepreneur being a person as if it's a noun. And instead, we want to think about it as a verb. And so entrepreneurship is a way of being. Um, it's a way of thinking. And so, you know, we want team members who it doesn't it doesn't mean that you have started your own business, uh, but it's like a, a, a bias towards action, a bias towards uh, moving the ball down the field. And so I think um, seeing that is, is incredibly attractive. Obviously, you need to understand your role. You need to understand the guardrails on your position, not be doing things that are outside of them wildly and all the rest of that. That's not what I'm talking about. Uh, but that's the first one that, that maybe came to mind uh, is, is, uh, is that. These values, though, that's what I would look for is like, are you a person who persistently pursues perfection? Are you fair and generous? You know, and so um, we also use this idea of... Um, there's a, a hiring methodology called top grading. Uh, and in in top grading, one of the most important uh, sort of at, or like um, tools within it is the threat of a reference check. And um, prospective team members who can talk very fluently about their relationship uh, with their former employers uh, and even if maybe they left on less than ideal terms, uh, they would say, no, I like, go ahead and call them. Like I can, they can tell you why I left or they can tell you what, why they fired me. Um, and I'm not necessarily scared of you talking to them because I'm confident, um, that I can tell you how I've grown through that experience of failure or yeah. Um, my, my former, you know, supervisor was Tom or Susan. Um, and when you see, uh, team members who have a resistance, uh, to unveiling those aspects of their past, um, that's a pretty significant red flag. And that's the case, whether that person is an entry line employee or a senior executive, uh, the fluency with which they talk about their previous experiences when it comes to the threat of a reference check, uh, I would say that's a big, that's a red flag. Well, Eddie, thanks. Uh, thanks so much for coming on the show. Eddie Zakes from Earth Development. For people who want to network with you, maybe they're even interested in partnering with you. You mentioned about partnering and you work with um, service partners all over the country. Um, how can people listening get in touch with you? Sure. I would say two different ways. If you're looking to get in touch with me personally, uh, LinkedIn is probably the best way you can find me. Uh, Eddie Zakes, uh, easy search, E-D-D-Y. I spell my name with a Y. And then of course, earthdevelopmentinc.com is our website. And uh, you can find all the information about Earth Development there. Uh, and, and feel free to reach out through, through our website as well. Well, great. Well, I'll put links to both of those in the show notes. And uh, thanks so much for coming and sharing on the Landscaper's Guide. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, Jack. And thanks for the work that Ramblin' Jackson is doing on behalf of Earth Development uh, to help us reach the right customers. Well, I hope you enjoyed that conversation with Eddie. You know, one of the things that 
I see in common with leaders of these best places to work, the companies that I really like working with, is they're always learning. That reminds me of Ramlin Jackson's core value of grow or die. We're always looking to grow. We're always looking to get better. And I invite you to join us on that journey. Come to one of our upcoming webinars or see us in person at one of the upcoming trade shows. So check out landscapersguide.com slash events. Make sure you subscribe so you never miss an episode. My name is Jack Jostis, and I look forward to talking with you next week on The Landscaper's Guide.